first of all, uh, sorry for the lack of videos, it's been rather busy, um, uni work and, and other things. Um, we did a, David and I did a display, which I'm going to put a bit of footage on in this video, at um, the Cenotaph for Remembrance Sunday, uh, actually on the Saturday before. Um, and I'm currently at David's flat, uh, as you can see here. Um, rather excellent collection, there's David. He's been doing some artwork as well, uh, Fourteen Farmy and uh, Duke of Wellington's. I um, hope I've, I've got that in frame okay. Um, and tonight we're going to, uh, is it the, the Manchester Regiment Association? Cheshire Regiment. The Cheshire Regiment yeah. Association. Oh, I should have bought my Cheshire BD, never mind. <laughs> um, um, my 49 pattern. Uh, but we're, so we're going to do a display there. Uh, David's taking second war kit, I'm taking some post war stuff. So we'll get a little bit of footage of that as well. Um, so yeah, and after that we're doing, we might show the flying kit uh, yeah. as well because yeah. we're doing, yeah, tomorrow. Uh, with timeline events, events. Yeah. we're doing um, a uh, photo, shoot. photo shoot with a Sh Abra Shackleton at Coventry yeah. Airport. So that's uh, going to be quite interesting. But we'll get later on. We'll get the uh, kit out, the yeah. kit out, the flying gear that David's going to be wearing. I'm just doing. Um, I'm, I'm wearing the berry because it's <coughs> a little bit too small for me. I'm just stretching it out. But I'm wearing ground crew uh, kit, so I'm not just uh, service dress with a great coat because it's going to be cold. I think. Mm -hmm. um, but David's uh, got the full flying gear for sort of late 50s early 60s yeah so we'll have a look at that so here we are preston town center um and this is sorry for lack of video it's been a bit busy recently but this is uh, our little display we're doing for um well it's actually saturday the 12th but obviously the day between uh the 11th and remembrance sunday and we're just here by the the cenotaph in uh Preston Town Centre, doing a little display of First World War gear, um, just for rations and small kit at this end, with um, obviously respirators there, uniform, with my great grandfather's medals. He wasn't in the Loyals, but we've badged the uniform up as that because it's the local regiment. Um, and officer's gear at the end here, the cuff rank uniform there, officer's boots, various other bits, wire cutters, folding saw, and so on. That's the collection tin for the British Legion at the end there, so that's what we're doing this Saturday. And obviously my accomplice, as usual, is David. So there we go. Something David's just reminded me to mention is, of course, we have a brew on the go at the back here, because you can't be doing without a brew. There we go. Happy now? Yes. Excellent. So we're just going to have a quick run through of uh, what David will be wearing uh, tomorrow for the Shackleton shoot um, in terms of uh, flying gear. So David, take it away. Yeah, so to start with we have here the thermal leggings. These particular ones are dated 1966. And as you can see they're fleece lined. I've not worn them before so this is going to be an interesting experience. We also have Slined fully. Which I'm not sure if it is dated. Also 66. And fleece lined. But these go back to the, the 50s. Yes. Yeah. yeah. In terms of design, that is. Yes, that's right. Introduction date. The ubiquitous um, in the street, thick woolen socks that are probably worn. Probably into the 20s and 30s. Going back, and going back that far. Yeah. yeah, these particular ones came from a friend of mine. Um, he used to work at the hospital. He was uh, RAF nursing service and became Queen Alexandra's Royal um, nursing, nursing Corps. Yeah. yeah. Or nursing service, yeah. I can't remember. No, Quarren, so yeah, it would be nursing corps. Uh, beyond that, we're going to be wearing a nice pair of soft gloves. These ones for a little bit of added warmth and then the emissary kid ones over a bit more protection again they're just after the war the white ones just after the second world war yes yeah. on top of all that we'll have a nice big air crew flying suit this one's the mark 2 or 2a this one's in immaculate condition Bought from Stonely last year. Oh yeah, Stonely Militaria. Yeah. Winter Stonely. Yeah. 
And again, this is what they're wearing, I think, from about... We have a look at the labels. Yeah, this is what they're wearing from about 56 onwards. You see, it has this massive label of all the instructions for wearing. Get their light on and there. it's not dated, if I remember rightly. But there's certain features of it that mark it out as being early, from what I remember, but... Uh, Rick still did your best. Yes, well, we'll get into more detail of it another time. We're just doing a quick overview at the moment. It's fine. On the feet, I have the... Over the Fox. Yeah, 52 pattern flying boots. Um, some of you will recognise them being very similar to the 1943 pattern flying boots, in so much that they can be cut away here and made into a shoe. Um, For escape purposes. Absolutely. Uh, whereas the 43 ones had a sort of suede upper. These are pure leather. And from what I've seen of the pictures, they're worn inside the flying suit rather than over the flying suit. Um, rubber soles, or rubber heels rather, and leather soles. Uh, top of the flight suit, we're wearing a Frankenstein May West. Frankenstein is the company in Manchester that used to manufacture these. Oh, they yeah, look at the label in there. Yeah. They also made uh, uh, life jackets, parachutists, and other. Uh, you say they made a lot of different types of life jackets for different yeah. uh, parts of the services. Just to show on that, that's yeah. the. Well, it's disconnected, and that's the release bottle that would uh, inflate the May West. And when was that type of May West introduced, roughly? Again, fif uh, mid yeah, 50s? 50s? again. They were wearing the 41 pattern for absolutely ages. Yes. There was really nothing wrong with it. And a very. Um, yeah. Distinctive bit of kit. This is a Mark 1A bone dome or flying helmet. We've got the G type cloth helmet that goes inside. It has a NATO jack fitting into more modern aircraft, but you can get a converter that puts into wartime aircraft. We've got an H type mask with the earlier microphone on. It's just missing the gauze from over the um, exhalation valve, I think it is. Uh, I have another H type with that. Uh, and of course, we have the Helmet itself it has its velvet cover over the eye shields, it slides back and forth, and we do have a date it's deep inside there. We think it's 1967, if I remember. If you tilt it just a little bit, uh, yeah. that's it, the other way. More light, so I'll just zoom in slightly, see if we can, just there. if it will focus. There we go. Yeah. That should be clear enough on the video, I would have thought. Yeah, it's a Excellent. particularly nice one. It's a decent size and wasn't too expensive, considering how much these things tend to go for. And it's a very necessary bit of kit yes. for most applications. Some didn't wear them, did they? But a lot of well, strangely, the Shackleton crew seemed to have done that. Everybody wore it in the Shackleton. Yeah, so. And a carry bag for it there. Yes. Is that everything? That's it for now. Marvellous. Excellent. <laughs> so here we are at Coventry, uh, ready to uh, do the photo shoot. David's in high spirits. Um, in the back here we've got the uh, various bits of RAF uniform. So we'll, we might get a shot of you wearing the uh, flying gear when you put it on. Yes. So here you can see David sat inside the Shackleton in full flying gear with the bone dome etc. at one of the radar positions. Uh, which are part of the uh, area learning warning radar suite that was fitted to the Shackletons later in their life. Uh, and you can see the other reenactors here with myself outside the, uh, the Shackleton. The Shackleton is quite a large aircraft based on the Lancaster bomber. It was originally used for maritime reconnaissance and then area early warning. Uh, the photographs here uh, put uh, the information regarding photographers in the description of the video. If you're interested in seeing the Shackleton in these photographs, it's at Coventry Airport. WR963 and I'll also put a link to their website in the description of the video. So there we are, a little bit of a different style of video for me, hope you found that interesting. As I say I've put um, both uh, the credits for the photographers, uh, linked to the Shackleton uh, website and uh, also links to the night engine run which took place down in the description. Um, so if you're interested to see the videos of uh, the engines being run up at night, uh, check there. Um, Next video will probably be on a drill event we're holding uh, this coming weekend, the weekend of the 10th of December, um, for the uh, Duke of Wellington's uh, reenactment group um, in Keithley Drill Hall. So there'll be some footage of that hopefully, um, which is coming up. I'm heading off to that tomorrow. 
so busy busy uh, uni work and everything as I say keeping me from doing other videos uh, don't worry there will be more sort of kit uh, reviews and things coming up soon uh, when I get a bit of time and provided I can get some time when there's still daylight because uh, doing it under um, uh, li uh, incandescent light indoors is not great as you saw at David's with the uh, flying kit but uh, until next time bye for now